subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to the print. I have with me today Ms. Nisha Biswal. She is the president of the US India Business Council under the US Chamber of Commerce. Welcome Nisha. Thank you for giving us time. So just to quickly start off, what do you think are the issues for which the trade deal got stuck? I mean in the sense uh, we know there are several issues but what was the single most uh, sticking point you think? So my understanding is that, you know, they have been working together for quite some time trying to arrive at a small package um, that would bring some benefits in both directions. Um, I was hopeful that uh, that package would be completed and ready in uh, time to launch and announce uh, during the president's visit. That obviously did not happen. And so that is um, disappointing. Um, I don't know that there was a particular thing that uh, um, derailed it. Rather, I think that uh, what I have heard in the statements uh, by the two leaders, uh, what Minister Goyle uh, seemed to have indicated earlier today, um, is that there was a desire to have this package be launched as a part of a larger process and that that is what they are working towards and that there is some uh, hope or optimism that in fact um, some kind of a trade package will be announced in the coming weeks that it's undergoing some kind of legal review or something. I don't know all the details of that. Obviously, we were hopeful that there would have been something in time for the president's visit, but I am going to continue to um, um, advocate and urge that some uh, small package be able to be announced that would address issues uh, such as India's desire for a restoration of GSP, as well as American companies that have uh, sought for uh, some relief against price control policies, um, whether there's some uh, basket of issues on market access for agricultural products, uh, some relief on tariffs, um, particularly in the ICT you know, uh, sector. So I think that there is uh, still some hope and expectation that these issues might get resolved. Sure. So that's interesting. You, you're you saying that you're still hopeful that there could be a trade package, small or limited, in the weeks to come. Now, I'm asking you this because uh, President uh, Donald Trump had recently stated and, and, you know, there was this press conference in his India visit where he stated that, you know, he's hopeful that there'll be a big deal at the end of this year, which is also, you know, uh, linked to the fact that he will be coming back after the election. So you're still hopeful that it will happen in the coming weeks? Um, of a small deal and then a bigger trade deal? I, I would certainly advocate for that. The reason I say that is that if you are entering into a larger negotiation on a more complex set of issues, it's good to start with a confidence building measure that says, hey, we've been able to resolve these three or four or five issues. And therefore, now we can start working towards a larger agenda. If you keep rolling things into a bigger and bigger and bigger package and you don't get resolution on any of the things that you discussed previously, then things that were previously closed become reopened, things that were done become undone. And I don't think that that's the basis on which you can engage in the larger trade deal. So my, um, um, not only my urging, but my sense of where I think the two governments are, I think that there's an appreciation for that reality. And I am hopeful that we will see um, agreement on a small basket of issues in the near term as we look towards perhaps a larger um, trade uh, discussion um, over the longer term. Also, uh, I understand that the main sticking points continues to be access to, you know, greater market access uh, to the American agricultural goods. You think that is the main issue or, or it's also about medical devices? What are the, what are the, you know, immediate issues that needs to be addressed according to you? I mean, I, I do think that the two sides have worked very hard to come up with some kind of a way forward on um, the medical device issue. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one that both addresses India's desire to uh, create more affordable um, access to medical devices, 
uh, for its population, but on the other hand, still keeps the space open for innovative products and technologies to be entered into the market, looking at differentiation of prices for different uh, technology and, and, um, and then also um, looking at things like uh, rationalizing the trade margins, the market prices, et cetera, as a means of ensuring some of that affordability. I think that there's been a lot of progress on that issue. And I'm hopeful that that can be part of what can be resolved in a more definitive way. I think it builds confidence amongst other sectors and other industries when problems are solved. I think when the can gets, uh, gets kicked down the road too often, then I think it, dis, uh, it becomes uh, dispiriting and demoralizing uh, and could become inhibitor for new investments coming in. I think both governments understand that and therefore uh, that's the cause of my uh, optimism that something um, would be resolved soon. I think on the agricultural market access, there's clearly some areas of where America would like to see um, its exports uh, welcomed into India and some areas where India is perhaps um, more leery because of important domestic producers. Um, and I don't have the full visibility on all of the different areas that are under discussion uh, in the agricultural uh, uh, negotiations. And by and large, the agricultural producers are not um, our industry members per se. But I know that it's important for both countries to find a way to collaborate um, in the agriculture um, arena, and I think that that is also uh, a place where we've seen, you know, some progress. And I would think that um, that they've been able to identify a sufficient uh, number of areas where there is a positive benefit on the U.S. side that doesn't necessarily cause uh, the same amount of of uh, dislocation on the Indian side. Right. Also, uh, coming to the other area of data localization, I know that's not part of the trade deal, but do you think that's also a sticking point, which is probably stopping both sides to move ahead? Um, I think the data localization is certainly an area that both industry and government are uh, um, engaged on. Um, if every country moves towards a policy of requiring hard localization, then frankly, the two countries that will suffer the most in terms of our uh, innovative industries and our, our uh, large profile on service uh, economy uh, are India and the United States because we are the IT service providers to the world. We are, uh, we both have the largest amount of consumer data within our countries, but we also have the companies that are most engaged in supporting that. So if every country moves towards hard localization, um, it will have an adverse impact on Indian industry and on US industry. And rather, I think there's a desire to look at more collaborative approaches that respect India's desire on, and, and, and focus on privacy, on law enforcement, um, and on cybersecurity, but at the same time allow for the flow of data for digital commerce. Right, but in terms of what the government has been stating and, and our foreign minister, uh, uh, Minister Jay Shankar had recently stated, and he's been stating that for a, for a, for a while now, that data security is all about national security. How do you interpret that? as uh, you know as as a body that is representing uh, representing the I think American you can companies. have data security and i think you can have national security and you can still have uh you know um the kinds of partnerships that allow for uh that flow of data and digital commerce right so um you know i've heard some indian experts talk about you know that the us and india should perhaps pursue um, an agreement under the Cloud Act uh, that would allow for, for example, that kind of data sharing mm -hmm. uh, protocols to be put in place. I think there are many different uh, ways in which we can address this. And the question is, you know, can we sit down at the table and figure out some of these modalities? 
or is each government going to act in isolation and then industry will be stuck trying to figure out what that means for them. Uh, so what USIBC has sought to do is to provide for not only the government to government, but a track 1.5 that brings industry to the table, both US and Indian, and says, okay, how can we work together to work through some of these issues and uh, achieve you know, uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. Also coming to the issue of trade deficit. Now, President Trump constantly uh, says the fact that even a 24 billion trade deficit is is, is harming uh, US. But we are also seeing on the strategic side, on the defense trade, a lot has been happening. And India just bought a number of defense armaments, helicopters and others. And there are other deals also in the pipeline. So do you think uh, that argument still holds true as far as trade deficit is concerned? Certainly, I think every country wants to see some more, um, you know, um, parity in terms of how the two-way trade and investment flows are going. Mm -hmm. um, I will say we've seen a lot uh, of uh, Indian investment into the United States. We're seeing that grow. Uh, we're seeing the trade imbalance between the U.S. and India is um, slightly decreasing, which is a great trend. Uh, we're seeing India's import of American energy um, also go up. I think uh, Minister Pradhan spoke uh, earlier today and he talked about 11% of the trade between our two countries is comprised of the energy trade. And that is by and large going in one direction, which is U.S. energy coming into India. Um, so these are all very strong, healthy signs for a relationship that is um, flowing in both directions and is mutually beneficial to both economies. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting that you speak about the energy trade. That's something that's emerging as the you know the single most uh, bright uh, sort of sector within the India-U.S. Uh, trade, and uh, that's what you know Prime Minister Modi was also saying and President Trump that it has increased by 500 percent. So going forward, how do you see that sort of uh, coming out as you know as, as as one of the good stories? Well, it is definitely a very bright spot, a very good story. And uh, as India uh, continues to grow as a energy consumer, um, I think the United States can play an important role in ensuring energy security in, uh, in India, uh, in helping India meet the demands of its consumers and of its industry. Um, and at the same time, though, I don't want to overemphasize or over rely on any one sector, because our two economies are not um, you know, operating in silos. We're not confined to a defense partnership only or an energy partnership only. We're actually the most broad-based economic partnership that you could potentially have uh, because we have very broad-based economies and we have entrepreneurial societies and, you know, the possibilities for the US and India to develop a fairly deep and extensive and comprehensive uh, economic and trade partnership is very high. And so we wanna see growth on the energy side. We wanna see growth on the defense side. We'd like to see more global supply chains housed in India. We'd like to see an ecosystem where the incentives that are necessary for those kinds of supply chain investments, priority number one, access to the market, the Indian market, that's a big draw. Um, but also addressing the constraints that are posed by you know, land, labor, um, tax and regulatory, if we can work through some of those, I can see India continuing to grow at a rapid clip in uh, being able to create opportunity for its people, in being able to create uh, the jobs and the industrial base that is necessary, and done in a way that um, continues to bring enormous opportunity for an investment from the United States and other countries. Mm -hmm. We also hear a lot uh, on the fact that, you know, even if you are looking at a $500 billion, you know, of India-US bilateral trade target, that, that is not really achievable in, in, in the coming years. Do you think that is a far-fetched uh, ambition or that is achievable? Well, I mean, in the last five years, we went from 100 billion to 160 billion, right? So about a 60% 
um, increase. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're talking about is trying to do a many-fold expansion, you know, tripling essentially the current levels from going from 150, 160 billion to getting to 500 billion. Um, and how do we get there? Uh, is it achievable? Yes. Why? Because India is operating off of a very large base of an economy. We think that even if growth slows uh, for a quarter or two or even a year, um, that ultimately that growth is going to pick up, mm -hmm. um, that the Indian economy will double. Uh, and as that economy doubles, the opportunity for trade is going to also expand dramatically. We do need to take steps to facilitate that trade. Right. And one of the big steps is to be able to work on an overarching trade agreement or trade framework that really does open up market access in both directions, that really does you know, facilitate more India can make possible to make in India, then India can export to the region. It can be, you know, its economy can diversify from being... Right, but we recently heard that, you know, from the White House that the make in India is basically a strategy where India is being more protectionist. Uh, with also, you know, uh, tariffs being imposed, we've heard what had happened at the finance, uh, you know, the union uh, financial budget. And that's also being highly criticized from the American side. Well, look, there's clearly issues that need to get worked out. There are clearly issues in both directions. Both countries have things that they would like to see open up or whatnot. And we are in the business of trying to find paths forward and solutions. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think, you know, from my perspective, yes, is there a lot of work to be done? Of course there is. But we have also shown the progress that has happened. I mean, U.S.-India Business Council has been around for 45 years. When we were created, uh, the trade between our two countries was virtually non-existent. Yeah. Um, and, and nobody was fighting over market access to the Indian market because nobody cared about the Indian market. It was not a market that was, you know, developed and important and open and accessible. Today, there is an enormous interest in trade between our two countries. Does it get contentious from time to time? Yes, but that's because it is so much more consequential than it ever has been before. Sure, thank you so much. So that was Nisha Biswal, president of the US-India Business Council. You just heard her saying that the $500 billion target is achievable and maybe a trade deal, a small trade package can also be achieved in the weeks to come. For The Print, this is Naini Basu. With me on camera is Nikhil Harjilis.